Welcome to Fright Night Gaming. Get ready for bone-chilling breakdowns, terrifying gameplay, and all things horror gaming has to offer. So gather your courage, turn off the lights, and prepare for your host of the Fright Night Gaming Podcast, The Terror Twins. <laughs> All right, welcome back to Friday Night Gaming. You got uh, Dan and Darren. What's up, Darren? Hi, Daniel. Glad to be back. So we are back in the cave, the man cave. <laughs> yes, we are. Thank you for pointing that out. We are here. <laughs> yeah, because like we said, this is the way we're doing it now. And we have our mic set up much better, so we can actually talk normal instead of being like, hello, Darren. Dude, the last podcast was so funny listening to you try to talk. <laughs> dude it was it was horrible because i was so afraid of my volume my mic going through your mic anyways it was a pain but uh we're way better now so we're good it's a work in progress guys each time it's gonna get a little bit better yeah yeah so uh anyways what's up guys we had a huge tcm update so that's pretty much what we're gonna be talking about <laughs> yeah like we're gonna like i said we want to talk about other games and we are gonna talk a little bit of dbd and uh, to start out, but let me just run you through. We're going to be talking about the new update, Nancy's house. We're going to be talking about Johnny. There was a little bit of a nerf that people are not happy about. Not happy at all. No, no. So, uh, and then we're going to talk about Danny, the new character, all the bugs. We're not, or not bugs, all the, uh, what are they called? Patches? Patch Patches? We're not going to talk about all of them because, dude, they weren't lying. There is like 250 of these patch notes. Yeah, we looked at that list and we're like, we're not going to go through each one. No. No. So next uh, next episode, we'll probably touch. I'm going to go through and just pick out the stuff that like helps us understand the gameplay a little. Like patches that you're like, oh, that because there's a couple I read where I was like, oh, that's interesting how that works. And I didn't know that that was even a problem, but that makes sense, you know? Okay, I, I believe you. I don't know what you're talking about, but I'm sure yeah, it's very vague. Yeah. That was very vague, but it sounds like I like I onto something, yeah, right? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, anyways, uh, yeah, and then I don't know. Oh, killer clowns. We're gonna talk about that next pod too. So, anyways, if you guys could do one thing for us, we only ask for one. Of course, if you're on YouTube, like, subscribe. That stuff's awesome. And then uh, if you're listening to the podcast, for one, if we have this on audio, all streaming platforms. You can find it. If you guys could just leave a review and simple as like leaving five stars is enough. If you guys leave a comment on Apple, uh, we will read that on here. And you'll be famous. Famous. <laughs> the whole world will know you. <laughs> so be, I don't know. Maybe some of you aren't ready for that. <laughs> maybe not. It's, it's kind of a big deal. But so. We would appreciate it if you were ready and you left a comment, please. Yeah. It helps us grow. Yeah. You know what I was thinking about too is like doing a live stream like once a week or something. Yeah. It'd be like, interesting. I want to play I and mean, we play the game all the time. And it's like, why not just go live so we can talk to you guys while we play, right? Yeah. And like I said, I was thinking because sometimes I don't know, you get into live streaming and you try to do it too much, man. I'm just not, I'm not built to live stream every day. No. Well, it's exhausting sometimes. It, it, I want to do it to where it's fun. I don't want to do it to where it becomes work. Right, right. And uh, we've done it where we came work and it's not fun. So anyways, uh, yeah, let us know if you guys are interested in that. Well, and let me say this game legit is fun to live stream opposed to other games we've done in the past. Not so fun to live stream. Right. Well, no, and it's it would be fun just to hop on and play for a couple hours. You know what I mean? Like on Saturday or something. Yeah. Yeah. And if you guys want to see how bad we are as victims, come check us out. <laughs> Dude, my killer versus victim like skill is it's so disproportional well we've become killer mains i think you know what I've, I've i've read about this and they say like it's a lot easier and obviously it's easier to be a killer than it is a victim and i think that's if you're starting to play the game i disagree with that oh for real for real no well, no shot well it's e okay here's what i would it's easier to be a killer in that you're not getting chased you don't have the pressure of dying but as a killer, you, you, if you don't know what you're doing, you could tank the whole game for your squad just because you're, you have no clue what you're doing. Yeah. But you know what? But I guess the thing is as a victim, you're pretty much reliant on yourself. Whereas killer, if you have other good killers around you, you guys still could be successful. Even if you, you're not good. Yeah. I guess the way I look at it, it's like, 
as a bad victim, you just die. As a bad killer, you just have more of a negative effect on the game as a whole. Yeah, and you probably want to... I think there's just more pressure. Yeah, and you probably want to turn in-game chat off because your teammates might let you know that you're not doing well. <laughs> Correct. But I, but I think killers... I think it's a lot easier. Now, it's, it's not easy, but it's easier than I think being a victim. And I can prove that because I have played a lot and I'm a, still a terrible victim and I'm a decent killer. Hmm. Now, also, I've played a lot more killer. Chicken or egg? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I think... Uh... I think it is, it is, I, I think starting out playing as a killer is probably a good way to start just to learn the top of the map. Like you don't want to start. I would not recommend starting as Leatherface as that's a little overwhelming, uh -huh. uh, especially in the basement. Cause you legit, like I've played a lot and I still get lost in the basements to where I'm like, I can't dare and I can't find the door. You're going to have to give me some time. You know, dude, basements take forever to learn. You're right. Really, you only it, basement's good to know, but the main part you need to know is the main part of the map, the whatever ground level floor, if you want to call it that. Yeah, that's what's most important. But yeah, and being a killer, obviously, it's easier to just traverse that area without the pressure of being killed. Right. And yeah, let's be honest. In your first games, you you pretty much are going to be useless for your team. But like, you just start picking it up. It just takes time. Yeah. Anyways, so if you guys haven't noticed, I am a little sick, so I'm sorry if I cough a couple times during this. I'll try to keep it off the mic, but my mute button is like far over here. There's no way I'm making it to that. No, no, it is what it is. All right. Uh, so before we jump in, uh, anything new with you? Anything you want to talk about? Life, just love, love loss? <laughs> anything like that? No, I've been playing a ton of Texas Chainsaw. Do I played more, I think, in the past you know, 48 hours than I have well, I'm not obviously not more than I've ever had, but the more in that short time period, I played. No, a ton. you said more than you ever. <laughs> I caught have. myself. I'm like, that's not true. <laughs> but I played a ton. I've probably played like I don't know six hours or something, which is a lot for me in a short period of time. Eight hours, maybe. Okay. Yeah. Respect. But no, I'm, I'm enjoying the new update. I like the new map. I like the new characters. I have a lot of opinions on them, <laughs> and we will get into all that. I just want to share. I I got to share some normal life stuff real quick because this is just. My life this this month has been crazy. Uh, so this is just a little thing, but and I'm gonna say I have a stain on this shirt right here. I know it's there. It is what it is. I spill coffee. It's in. I don't have an extra sweatshirt right now. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, the reason being my dryer went out. Right. Right. So we bought a new dryer. Boom. Get the dryer here. Turn it on. The air code. Flow sense alert, which means the airflow out of the dryer going through the ducting is clogged. So, of course, my house, it's a two-story house. Of course, the dryer vents out the roof. So, I had to go. I tried to clean it out. There's a couple different ways you can do it. Anyways, I went through the normal, through the dryer vent, tried to clean it. Went up top on the roof, tried to clean it on the way down. There's something clogged. Anyways, I called plumbers over. They do the exact same thing I did. Now we're at the point they couldn't fix it, and they're talking about we may have to cut a hole in our wall to access the ducting because they think it may have come undone somehow. Oh, my gosh. I didn't know it was that deep. Last I heard is you called the plumber, so they might have to cut a hole in the wall? Yes, because apparently there's some massive clog in my ducting. Uh, it, it's such a pain. That is not fun. Yeah, you go. well, it's not fun when you go from buying like a new dryer to having them come over it costs money for them to clean it and stuff and now that kind of a repair it's gonna cost a bit it's weird your old dryer just i guess it probably just didn't have that sense it didn't have the sense but i knew there was something wrong okay. i had a sense this may have been an issue we'll put it that way i wasn't totally oblivious i thought i could fix it though oh okay so you're you're leaving a little bit of information out well, yeah, the old dryer went out, and I think it was because it was clogged. Uh -huh. and it was too much on the dryer, so it was old anyways. But <laughs> And that's been plumbing talk with uh, yeah. Friday Night Gaming. <laughs> well, that's, yeah, that's our real-life segment of real-life stuff, and that's as deep as we're going to go into it. <laughs> All right, let's get into uh, some DVD real quick. So, so Dead by Daylight, if you don't know what that is. Yes, because I'm going to be honest, we never got into this game. I, you know, I did play, I downloaded it on my PS5 and I played a couple of games 
it's cool I, it's cool but it's something about the style it just didn't like appeal to me that much yeah it's diff- it's a little like a faster paced of the survival horror like the so it's kill like one killer and four victims i believe i think that's correct yeah i think it's four or five so i've never i actually have never played dead by daylight i've just watched i watched some people stream it and stuff and it's kind of fun it's fun to watch people that are really good at like certain killers and uh but I did not know how toxic that community was. Well, let me just say this. One thing that Dead by Daylight definitely has is an arsenal of killers. And they have like well-known, like they just brought Chucky in. They have Bubba from Texas Chainsaw. They have Freddy Cougar. So they hit the nostalgia points with all the great killers. That's what I like about it. And the gameplay, not so much for me, but maybe I don't know if I dove into it. I might be in, I might like it better. I haven't played enough to really even give an analysis on that. But you're right. Daniel showed me this little, what's the YouTuber you watch? Spook and Jukes. Spook and Jukes. He's, he's good. He talks about, of course, whatever Dana watches, then I, I'm on his YouTube and then I start watching it too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But he talks about the toxicity in the community. And, you know, it's not just for Dead by Daylight. You see it everywhere, but they seem to have a bigger problem. Yeah. So he, what he'll do, and this is, it's hilarious. He just plays his normal games and he's like a chill streamer. Like nothing. He seems like a totally normal, like, likable guy seems cool seems cool he does and it's hard to say that about a lot of a lot of people so Dude, legit so anyways he goes into games plays normal as a killer i think he is a killer main and uh plays normal and he'll get messages from these victims if he's dominating like they have certain like it's it's weird because like certain certain streamers have like this set of rules that like if you kill them cer- a certain way in the game it's like toxic well, they don't, they call, well, and through this channel, I learned, I learned about tunneling and I didn't know what that was. And it's, I just think essentially it's when you just follow one player, like I tunnel Connie in Texas Chainsaw because I want to get her out of the game because she's really good. Yeah. So yeah, tunneling is just keying in on one player. Which it, it's funny that it, people, so people complain about tunneling. They complain camping. about camping hooks because in that game you put people yeah. on hooks and it's like, dude. I'm at the point person. I'm like, I don't care what people do. It's their choice to play it. It doesn't matter. It's a game. Well, and that's as someone who doesn't even play that was, that's my stance too. It's like, if it's in the game, you can use it however you want. Like it's part of the game. If you don't like it, then you have to adapt your play style. Right. Right. Like figure out some way to beat him out. To me, that's like the fun part of gaming. It's like, you got to figure out a way to beat this guy. Oh, absolutely. And that's, and that's how that spook and jukes approaches it. It's kind of like, it takes away from like there's like because people try to set all these standards for how you should play and it's like that's for one it'll never work like you can't people will never follow that and two it's like it's just as complicated like it gets like super weird then it's like so you're supposed to not kill this guy in this situation and then you're like almost getting to where it's like you're helping the victims you know yeah, it, well, it just doesn't make sense. I mean, I think people just complain because they get frustrated. That's really all it is. They just get frustrated with the game and their gameplay. And then they just, in Spook and Jukes, was that whatever, or whatever his name is. It's Spook and Jukes. Yeah, he calls these guys out because these Twitch people, typically Twitch, they're just like the most toxic, like, oh, look at this guy. He's only got three followers. Hey, you're pathetic. You're a pathetic killer. Just because they killed him, it's like, well, they were better than you. Yeah, and these guys will send him messages, and they know, like, they'll go even after other streamers, like, that are on Twitch, because they played a certain way, and they'll attack the chats and stuff. It is it is so toxic. It's, like, disgusting almost to watch, but uh, he does a really good job of just, it's, I wouldn't even say it's, like, exposing. He's just, it's, like, they did it, and he just shows it, you know? Yeah, but there's not much more to it. The funny thing is, again, I don't think this is just for Dead by Daylight. That's the problem I have with a lot of streamers. A lot of them have that same attitude where they they feel like it's okay just to like talk badly about other players. Like there's one thing about trash talk, which like we all like a little trash talk's fun. Like it's it's it yeah. you know if you're not it's not personal. You're just you know frustrated by a situation. Just make you know it's a fun thing to do. Sometimes I'm not into it, but I get it. But these people like go personal on them and like call out the channel, call out, you know, their membership, call it like they make it really like toxic and personal, which is weird. I don't know why they even do that. Yeah, well, it's like frustration with the game, a little immaturity, like that kind of stuff. But either way, I think he's doing the Lord's work out there. Yeah, it's a, it's an interesting watch. And there's a couple of them I've gotten deep on like that one guy. What does he call him? Tall toast. Oh, shortbread. 
Shortbread. It was whatever his real name. I don't know. Uh, but that guy was crazy. Like Dude, legit. Like some of these people are legit crazy. That one had me dying because he actually went to the guy's chat and complimented him because somebody had sent him clips of this guy saying like hey this dude is super toxic like you need to make a video on him spook and jukes checked him out and he's like oh no he's not toxic he's just funny like he's just joking around it's like a shtick you know and spook and jukes was wrong <laughs> so then spook and jukes all he did is go in the guy's chat and say hey i had someone or i don't know if it's a dm or what but it was like hey somebody was sending me videos of like to make or, uh, clips to make a video on you about how toxic you are but after watching you're just hilarious you're not toxic at all and that's like all he said it was like really nice no what do you think happened that guy went full he just went wild <laughs> he went dude he went super toxic on spook and jukes saying that spook and jukes has like he said some crazy he went like saying that spook and jukes was like attacking his kids attacking like all this stuff that the, uh, he didn't even bring up like all he he literally complimented him and this guy went off and you, you have to watch his video well, because it, he just went off about how he was being attacked by spook and well, juice and yeah that guy legit just lied yeah yeah, yeah. which is it's crazy but uh, that's the thing with like the content game too there are people who literally anything is content and anything that's controversial they're going to run with it even if they have to just make stuff up yeah i feel like that's the thing too when spook and juice calls people out like that guy part of it's like they act like they're upset and then maybe they are a little bit but it's really they're honestly a lot of them i think are excited for the exposure yeah not everybody wants to be the good guy you know some people play that hill role which is fine but when you're like super toxic and th trust me all, all these guys on that channel that he shows are they're not even close like they're crazy but well, uh, when you're legit like again trash talks one thing but when you're legit going after someone personally and that is going to affect that smaller streamer you know how it is when you stream to not a lot of people it like will affect you if you're a bigger streamers calling you out it's gonna like kind of it's, it's not gonna feel good yeah uh we don't care at all but some people might <laughs> yeah you guys can call us out i gotta i gotta say the one thing out of all like the toxic stuff that i just think is the most disgusting is when they do the view shaming of like and a lot of them aren't like huge channels they'll have you know what i don't even know on twitch like 500 followers or something maybe more a thousand and they'll be bashing someone for having just like a little bit less than them yeah and acting as if they're just this high and mighty oh oh you only have two people in your chat i have 20 you know <laughs> it's like what come on man it's just petty dude yeah petty stuff anyways that's that's our dbd talk uh <laughs> The game, although I, I do, like I said, I do enjoy watching it. It's just, I can see with that game, like there's a part of me that's like, oh, I want to jump in and play a little, but I can see the learning curve is crazy. Like the way they talk about uh, perks and like, it, it's, it's intriguing the depth that they've made that game with like what you can add on and how it affects the play style. Yeah, so, well, like you said, I was watching it, too, and I'm like, this looks cool. But, yeah, they talk about using different perks and the times you use them, and then they, they're they using all this terminology, like, oh, this killer has you know X, Y, and Z. And I'm like, I don't know what any of this means. <laughs> <laughs> I figured a couple of them out. I figured a couple because the funny thing is watching that, some of those perks are similar to, like, Texas Chainsaw. Then I was thinking, I'm like, I wonder if Texas Chainsaw will get like this with the community. Like, people not uh liking how leatherface is played like if you start as leatherface in the basement you go nuts and murder you know do you just take everyone out would people think oh this is a toxic leatherface i mean i don't feel like there's the same level and maybe because the game isn't as big as dead by daylight i don't see that much of the toxic behavior or people complaining about way ways the killers play i just don't see it doesn't mean it's not there but well and i think i think too it's just because dead by daylight's a little the gameplay is repetitive in that you can get hooked and you can come off a hook and i think you get hooked through the third time you die and so it makes it to where it's like you get in these chases you get down you get hooked you get off you get in chases it's kind of repetitive like you do the same like gameplay loop yeah that's a good point by design it almost breeds frustration <laughs> yeah but you know in texas chainsaw you get caught you're you're dead there ain't no so, there ain't no hooks to revive from. Yeah, I, I think it's it's more of like I think 
at least that's how i approach it it's like a free-for-all it's just kind of whatever happens in texas like i don't ever think like why did that guy kill me so fast or i mean sometimes i've for a while i was wondering how the killers were so fast because i didn't know as a victim you could dash yeah daniel didn't understand the run mechanic which i understand because no. i didn't either at first but then we learned yeah because on keyboard and mouse like shift is sprint i didn't know space bar is like a dash didn't know that was a thing well and then it works differently with killers opposed to victims right yeah killers you don't have a dash so that's where it threw me off because like i said i'm a killer guy it's an it's understandable all right so let's get in <laughs> let's get into some update talk a huge huge update yeah so like let's just summarize kind of uh what we have what we what is new to the game like i said there's so there's actually more than i even thought well there's a million patches they did we're not going to go through all those because we don't have enough time nor do you guys want to hear every single thing but they made a ton of patches probably a lot of stuff you're not even aware of either am i but they made some other big, meaningful changes that you will know. Yeah, so some of the, okay, the key, obviously, we have a new killer or a new family member. That's Black Nancy, who is in a relationship with Cook and the stepmother or something of Johnny. She raised Johnny. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get into lore stuff later. That's just, you know, the down and dirty. Yeah. So we're going to go over her, her perks, and then there's Danny who's the new victim and he's got a really good perk or uh skill he's well he's just a really good balanced victim i think I, uh, he's probably gonna be my main victim to run when i run and i want to die well i'll tell you what as a leather face main here uh if i see danny i'm i'm tunneling i'm going for danny because oh. he's a problem and we'll explain why in a, a minute a huge huge problem right uh they moved the slaughterhouse valve finally uh so it's no longer in the basement, the pressure valve. Yeah, and that's that. I've played Slaughterhouse a few times uh, since the update, and it's changed the way that map plays totally. Because obviously, before everyone always went for the pressure valve, everyone, because it was an easy thing to get. Because you just go down in the basement, pop up, pop it off, and go. But now there's multiple times where victims were. I was a killer. Victims were victims were trying to go for the pressure valve. And they couldn't get it off. Every time they'd pop it, we'd just go shut it off because it's upstairs. And every time I played, it was right outside of Slaughterhouse. I'm sure it moves, though. Yeah, I've seen it. I think I saw it by holding pin once. Yeah. But it's always up. It's up now. So that, that to me, is a great change because that, that honestly was just too easy. It's impossible, nearly impossible, unless you're playing with just your super squad to cover that along with everything. Because sometimes it would spawn underground closer to Slaughterhouse and like if your team is patrolling the other side and that thing pops like getting down there with two killers because you're gonna get backstabbed is a difficult so uh I, very good change i'm glad they did it and well and i'll say it, it does feel a lot different when you play it now like that map has changed it feels like a different game because that pressure valve has moved yeah it's way better yeah. love it uh the other thing we have noise following victims uh not not a big deal no, but it is impactful. Like, there's been times where I, you know, run through, I don't know, make noise. I think I got like a bone chart or something. And then all of a sudden it's following me. I'm like, oh, gosh, dang it. And so it does get you in trouble, but I haven't been killed by it yet. But I don't know. It's, an, it's a good change. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Uh, Johnny nerf. And we're going to get deeper in this. Uh, but Johnny's, what is it? Is it his speed? His his lighting? It's his lunge. They they changed. Yeah. So we're not Johnny. Oh, I, in fact, I've only played Johnny a couple times. Yeah. Same here. So it's not a big deal to me. But I've seen the comments out there. A lot of people are mad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we'll get into that. Uh, gas station. The secret exit is no longer just a door. Yeah, that screwed me up the first time we played. It's a gate that's bought. You have to go through a locked gate. And then you have to go unlock that door. The smokehouse is what it is, right? I think so. Yeah. And then you can get out. So instead of just being able, because you used to be able to just go, really, you could just go through a slip spot through that side door and just get out right away. It was too easy. It was way too, I mean, you get a victim back there and it's like, you know, someone's going to get out because they're going to hide somewhere and yeah. just a pain. Uh, so another, again, another good change just for overall quality of life, especially for us killer means uh cook's ability he had a couple nerfs i think security pins so it used to affect 
the actual padlock and then I think the lock underneath it would both be security pin, which means it's just harder to get through. It takes a lot more time. It's when you go to a lock and you try to open it, it just it's like it feels like it's going nowhere when you're pressing <laughs> it, you know. It's a really good perk to have. And that coupled with uh no or no nobody one escapes hell. Yep. Just to let you know, that one affects all the locked gates, I think, right? Yeah, it just makes it harder to unlock. So you couple those together and it could be rough to get out. But yeah, so I can't speak on how the change has been because I, I play cook as far as the security pins. I don't know that it, it apparently it's a little easier. Take their word for well, it. They also had previously talked about his listening ability that they were going to. I, I, I haven't played cook since this update came out, but his apparently you could use his ability and it actually wasn't really draining it sometimes. Supposedly that's fixed. Well, I'll say I play Cook a lot. I played him a ton since the update, and it, I'm sure that it sounds like they made a change. I didn't even notice it. So, okay. So then, other than that, uh, then the big one, probably I think the biggest part of the update, the new map. Nancy's house is here. <laughs> Nancy's home. Are you going to talk about it? Oh, sorry. Oh. I, thought, I thought you were switching to something. <laughs> no, I'm just going to go to a video where I can look at the map. Yeah, so so Nancy's house, if you guys don't know, I guess we'll go over the layout. Uh, and I really the escape exits is probably what you want to know. So Nancy's house, so the way I think of it, have you how many times have you played Nancy's house? I think two or three, probably three times. Okay, I, I've played it quite a bit. Uh, I like to think the top four. So first of all, we're going to be straight up. We're not going to talk about the basements. No, no, because we've tried to and we've given... I think talking, I mean, all the basements are the same. There's a fuse box exit and there's a bunch of locked doors. And it's dark and hard to see. Yeah. So, yeah. so there you go. But so from what I know so far, the very, I like to think the top level is Nancy's house. The very top the level way, of the house. We nailed that. We nailed that. Oh, dude, our breakdown. Yeah. <laughs> dude, we were right on. Cause we just say we analyzed the trailer and we kind of, well, well, we didn't know the exits, but we kind of had a good layout for what the map looked like. Yeah. It is a split level. Like you walk in. On the front door, you're actually on the second floor. Which is the top level of the map. Right. Right. So the top level of the map, at the at the top level, there is an exit there, right? Um, there's a gate, right? Right. The gate, and you can use the, uh, the generator. You have to keep the generator off to get up there from the second level, which is kind of the main level of the map, right? Yeah, so we'll call, yeah, we'll call the second... Uh, why am I having trouble saying that? Because it's not the second story. It's really, we'll call it the first floor. Well, you can think of the map at three levels. There's the top where you, the front door and where that uh, gate is. Then there's the main level, the middle. And that's where basically everything is. The car battery exit, the generator, the pressure valve. Everything like is ground on the floor. Ground floor. And most of this map is played outside. Yeah. And then you have the bottom, which I would consider. That's the basement. The basement. That's, Yeah. So the ground floor, you can, yeah, there's a huge driveway on the right side, which I'll call it the right side, where you can go up, and that's where you're talking about. So you can shut the generator off down low, right? Right. And then there's a gate that's electrified. So the interesting thing is you don't, so let's talk about the exits. So the first we'll talk about the, we'll call it the generator exit, which is the gate at the top level on the, at the end of the driveway, Right. So that's okay. So that's the top level. Right. So to get out of that gate, you can do two things. You can one, kick the generator off and run up that big, long driveway driveway from the middle, the middle floor, ground level, ground level, all the way up to the top. So down on the ground level outside, there's a generator that goes all the way to the very top gate. Yeah. Well, yeah. I don't think that's no, true. No, no, sorry, sorry. The, the, so the generator has that, what, electrified floor. If, yeah, the fence that's electrified. Yeah, it's on the ground and it's going halfway up that driveway. Right, because as Leatherface, you know, it was really funny. I did this as Leatherface the first time I played it. I ran up that driveway and I got electrified and knocked myself down. Is there, there's nothing funnier than watching people get electrified and dropping. <laughs> well, then I was watching somebody, another guy who makes videos, that MIDI. Uh huh. Well, actually, I, I really do. I like his videos. Yep. Check him out. Yeah, he's definitely good. Uh, Anyways, I was watching him and he was playing as a victim and he's like, he was watching the Leatherface. He's like, don't do it. 
and he ran the Leatherface runs and gets electrocuted. And he's like, he goes, it happens every match. <laughs> <laughs> well, because people don't even know it. Because it does, it's hard to tell because it's not, it's actually not, I, I said gate, you're right. It's not a gate. I think it's just a electrified floor ground. Like this is electricity on the ground, right? Right, right. So you can, so you can kick off the generator run up that big long driveway, go over the now unelectrified because you kicked the generator off uh, floor and then go to the gate, unlock and get out that way. Or if you don't want to kick the generator off, you can go through the house. Again, you have to unlock a bunch of stuff to go through the house from the middle level all the way up to the top, unlock the front door, go out the front door, then unlock that gate and get out. So if you make it out the front door of the house, all you have to do is unlock a gate. Yeah. Okay. But it's, it's hard to get up there. So even if you, okay, so even if you're down below on the ground level, you kick the gin, you go up, you say there's one gate to unlock. It's the same gate. Yeah, right. And then to get into the house from the ground level, I think you have to unlock, there's a door that goes, that's inside, um, inside the the ground level, the garage, garage, yeah, garage. And then, or there's a gate on the outside and you can unlock. And I think you can take a ladder and I don't know if there's a door into the house, but okay. there's definitely a ladder that goes up. Yeah. There's a gate on the ground floor, just to the left of that long driveway we're talking about that you can unlock. And there's a ladder and usually the fuse box is up there on the second floor. At least that's where I saw it. That's what, that's where I've seen it too. I don't, I've seen, but I've seen it spawn all over. So, okay. Yeah. And there's that gate. And then you're right in the basement. There's one of those blue doors. Yeah. And, that leads to the staircase to the second floor. Right. Right. So, and then on the main floor though, there's not really much in Nancy's house going on um, other than there's uh so again, top level of Nancy's house really, again, there's the front door, there's a stairway down. There's also a ladder in Nancy's room that takes you down as well to the ground floor. So that, that is oh, the, Oh, okay. So wait a second. Hold on that ladder. I saw that it's in a room. It goes into Nancy's room. How do you access that from the ground floor? Um, so it's one of those come up spots. So in the garage, there is, I believe in the garage, there's a, a door or something you can go in and then go up. Is you it might a have locked to, door? It might be locked. I can't say for certain. Because I know the blue door, it has one of those big blue doors. Because I could not figure out as Leatherface how to get to that floor. Because I couldn't, I, I thought that was a basement door. Okay. It, it looks like a basement door, like, and but they have it to get from the ground floor up to the second story. I think so. So, so that's that's how to get out of that one exit. Then you have, let's see, you have the car battery. So the car battery is the exit on Nancy's house. So car battery is on the opposite side of the ex the gate, right? The it, the one we were talking about, the one going up the driveway. Yeah, if you're going out the back side of Nancy's house into the main map, it's the farthest away from you. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, in that one, there's actually a come up spot from the basement that comes up right there. And I believe there's two gates to get into the car battery uh, to then disable the battery. And then you have to uh, unlock a gate to then get out. So there's three gates. Well, there's two ways to get in, I believe. Oh, really? Yeah. I know there's one where I did that gallows uh, kill. And there's one on the side and one in the front, I believe. Hmm. So, okay. And then again, because that's in the kind of the back of the map, and there's a come up spot from the basement. That's one you really, as a killer, have to patrol because people are going to go for that. Okay, so we have the battery exit. We have the generator front gate exit. What else? Well, so we have the pressure tank. Now, I haven't used, the, I, I don't do the pressure valve very often. And now it's been, it's even harder to do. But I'm not sure where the gate opens, but in the tank, you know, the tank's random. Well, somewhat random. And I'm not sure. I've I've seen it once by Johnny's shack, but that's it. So then that's just on that ground levels out there in the backyard, right? Right. And then the okay. and then the fuse box I mean, again. I've seen it upstairs and I've seen it maybe on the back of Johnny's shack too. I can't remember exactly. And then of course the fuse box or the fuse exits downstairs in the basement. So we haven't uncovered any secret exit, right? No, because they said they are going to change some of the exits or a new way to leave. I haven't seen that way. I don't know if it's going to come later or if there's some secret we don't know about. I don't think that's the case because people usually find those things out pretty quickly. Yeah. One thing I'll say, though, Nancy, she has a dialogue where she talks about her secret room. I don't know what that is. 
Hmm. Have you have you heard this? No. Because oh, people have been looking for it. And at first I thought, well, maybe she's talking about that ladder that goes up into her room, but that's not really a secret room. Hmm. So I'm I'm wondering, just keep your eyes out and let us know if you know what that is. Well, the weird thing too is they have a garage door that you can open and close. That that was interesting that you can do that. Is there is, I think Cook's trucks in there. And that's what I thought would be like an exit. Yeah, initially that's what I thought too, but no. Huh. See, I haven't even played it. Well, maybe we played as victims. I don't remember. But uh, the one thing I do wish they would have done with this, and we'll talk about it with ways this update could have been done a little bit better. Nothing too critical, but, you know, got to take a look at it. The one thing I think they could have done is uh, put this map in a heavier rotation. Oh, for sure, dude. Because, like, you said, like, when we were playing together, we got into it a couple times. But... Like when there was, I mean, we went on long runs. It seemed like it was almost like the fifth time. It took me like five matches to get into Nancy's. And I'll, I'll be honest. We don't ever do this. We dodged one lobby because it was our last game. And we're like, dude, we want to get Nancy's house. We literally only played it once together, right? I think so. And I, the funny thing is when I played without him, I got it like three times in a row. Yeah. And then I, we never got it. So yeah, that's, I wish next time when you roll out a new map, just for a day, let it be the only map you can play. I mean, or just have it, I'm, I'm sure they have it, I don't know how they do, like, the randomness of it. I'm sure they could up its percentage or something to make it where it's, like, 50% of the time you'll be on Nancy's house, just for, like, uh, the first week or something. Yeah, yeah, that, that would be cool. Uh, and I don't know if they adjust the percentage. It didn't seem that way, because I got a lot of other maps, so. Yeah. Uh, oh, the other thing I wanted to talk about. Well, maybe we'll, we'll get into it. We'll get into it then. There's an issue... With the lobbies, a way that people are, were trolling a little bit. Oh, because they, yeah, well, we'll talk about that. So overall, you you haven't played much. What do you think of Nancy's map from your limited experience? Uh, I like it a lot because it's very different than any other map. One, I like the multiple, like, I like the split level thing. I think that's, that's a cool way to do it. Of having that top level be like the second floor. And you can look out that balcony, even as a victim, if you got up there, you kind of overview the map Dude, and see everyone. That's a great point. I love the balcony where you can, because I went up there as a killer and I just, you can see everything other than the front exit at the top level, but you can see what, what's going on. Cause I wanted to see if someone was going to the car battery. And so I just looked over and I could see everything going on. And I thought that's really cool to be able to see the whole map from that point of view. Thoughts. Cook, have cook up there. Put padlocks on the front door and or the front door and any door, like put them on the doors coming up and like the front door and st sit on that balcony and just call out the victims to your teammates. <laughs> well, if you were going to do that, I would put a lock on the gate at uh, the, the top level The we'll call it the driveway exit. Uh -huh. I put a lock a padlock on that. I put it on the front door. Then you have those two secured, so you don't have to worry so much about them. And then well, do it. actually, and then you wouldn't even have to. The only the other two ways would be the gate that you're staying. If you're on that balcony, there's the ladder coming up, so you'd be watching that. So that wouldn't happen. You don't have to worry about that gate. Nancy's room ladder would be a problem, and then the stairwell. You but you could lock the stairwell. Nancy's room is probably just going to be a problem. But you're right, though. Using Cook's ability up at the top. That'd be pretty, pretty powerful. Well, because you could listen too. if someone is coming up, you'll know they're in the house. Yeah. Yeah. I think from cook, a cook, because because I play cook all the time. I think what I would use my locks on is the front door and I'd lock those two gates to car battery because I think everyone's going to go those those two paths. Yeah, that's just some some meta strats. Yeah. meta. Don't know if it works. Just something I thought I had. One thing we didn't even talk about. You don't need Leatherface anymore. Oh my we god! Gotta, actually, well, okay. Let's let's get into that right after that. Let's because I want to talk about that because we had a we had quite a few games with no Leatherface. Yeah, I'd say most of them were without Leatherface. Yeah. Um. So uh, overall, rate the map. Uh, I I would give it a. Right now, I'll give it a nine. Yeah, I'd say an eight point seven. You're right. That was a rookie. A rookie. Nine point one. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, but I agree with you. I love the layout. I like how open it is. Uh, there's even even though it's open, there's like hills and stuff when you're down on that middle level floor outside. Uh, 
it's still easy to hide. You're not like, you're not so exposed. Like there's a lot of grass areas as a, a victim you can hide. But what's funny, I found a lot of times about you, I don't know if it's just because the map just came out. There's times where I'd find clumps of victims. So you only played <laughs> once, but you just see, and I've watched other people play. It's almost like they clump together and they're just, sp they just kind of spread out at some point on that middle level. Yeah. It's, it's cause no one knows where to go. Everyone's panicking. <laughs> But no, I think it's a really cool map. It plays a lot differently than the other ones. Yeah, and that rating will change over time. Like, it's more just initial impressions. I enjoyed it. I wanted to play it more. Um, I, I mean, there's a lot of places to hide. There's some aggressive bushes, like big bushes. I would say, uh, I'd still say Family House is probably the hardest. I'd say Family House is the hardest for victims. I would say this map is probably going to be the easiest for victims to escape. The new Slaughterhouse. It's the new slaughterhouse because that car battery, like I said, imagine as a victim, you just come out of as long as you know where that exit is. It's, and that's the big if, like if you can figure that out, how to get up at that spot, right? By car battery, dude, you just pop a gate, unlock the battery, or kick the battery off, get out that gate and you're done. Well, and that's, well, that's what we'll have to figure out is like the patrolling paths, how easy it is to like patrol. Well, I'll say this right now, if you're a killer, which we were killer mains, I put someone patrolling that car battery. I put someone patrolling probably the house, making sure no one's getting, God, that's the tough part though, because they can go up the, they either kick the gen or go up through the house. And then, I mean, if you had two on the ground level, like the cook in the house, I, I would think you'd be all right. And, and you know, it also just depends on where the fuse and the pressure valve or the pressure tank spawn. So. Yeah, because with Leatherface, you, you could easily watch the car battery and then sprint around and watch a couple other things. But yeah, overall, great. I mean, I think they did a great job with the map. We'll see as time goes on how it's played, but yeah. overall, good good work. No, I was I was happy with it. Okay, so let's talk about the no Leatherface. Uh, that, it was such a huge change, and I didn't know how it was going to play. Uh, I guess what's your thoughts initially on, oh, cause we had uh, several matches, like I said, like we said without Leatherface. Yeah. So I think there's a couple maps where it's like more viable. Like there's, so I like it. I like that. You don't have to be a mate. It leaves it up to the family on what, how they want to play a certain way. So what I saw, we played family house quite a bit. We kept getting it. And without Leatherface, it's not a big deal as far as uh, you can still lock that house down. So we actually had a pretty good lineup. We had me, I was Nancy, I think you were Cook, and yep. we had a uh, Hitch. I think we had a Hitch too, yeah. And so, like, obviously, that's like trap heaven. So I, I used Nancy's, uh, her... Uh, Seeing ability? No, barbed wire. Oh. I used her traps, and I put them in all the slip spots, then Cook... Not cook. Then Darren, well, you did. You locked up the doors. Hitchhiker put his bone traps down, and we pretty much like were able to hold the house down. Now the downside to that, as soon as a victim escapes out that house, you're screwed. You're you're screwed. So hitchhiker needs to have that window. Like he probably should put two traps: one on the inside and then one on the outside where they jump out, because it's like what once they're out, it's it's bad. Yeah, so I think like I'm with you. I think Family House, you don't have to have a Leatherface, but let's think like Slaughterhouse. I still think Leatherface is pretty important because there's a lot of those barriers, and then even those little um, what do they call those gaps they can crawl through, crawl spots. Yeah, destroying those is really important on that map, as well as you kind of have to traverse a lot of area. And yeah. and I would say the same with Nancy's house. I think you really need a Leatherface because that's a lot of running around. Like that map, that middle ground outside is is big. I mean, I still think here's what here's my real opinion. I think Leatherface is going to help you on any map. I think having him is should be a must. I'm also again Leatherface main, but I I do think that'll help you no matter what you're doing. Now, having said that, you can get away with not having him on certain map like like certain maps with certain uh, family builds. But overall, like I think Family House is the one you can get away with it the easiest. Right and uh, but there was a lot of times because I wanted to play Black Nancy and level her up, but we we're on like Slaughterhouse and the other two was like a cook and like sissy or something. And I'm like, dude, I can't play Black Nancy because I'm just not going to be able to do much. Yeah. What's the other map? I'm, I'm missing Slaughter Family. What's the oh, gas, station. gas 
Yeah, if we're at gas station, gas station's good to have a leather face too, because again, you're running a wide area. Yeah, so I kind of like choose either Nancy or uh, Leatherface, like based on the map. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So overall, good change with uh, no Leatherface. I think it's. I think it makes for more fun gameplay. I think it makes it more fun. It's interesting because yeah, definitely depending on your killers, is going to change the the whole way your family's going to play the map. Also, what I've noticed the improved benefit is people aren't leaving as much. Right. They're not. I didn't see people dodging because, you know, a lot of people just were forced to play Leatherface. Now that's not the case. Yeah. But there is a dodging issue, which we'll go with. We'll go into when we get uh, the review. Yeah. But overall, I think it's a great change. Let us let the family choose who they want. People aren't going to leave. And then everyone's happy. They get to play with their character. Well, the funny part about it, too, there's now there's even more pregame lobby like changing and trying to line up the victims with the killers. Cause if you see that you have no leather face, but you have a cook and a Nancy or not cook a uh, hitch and a Nancy, they're going to want to run bomb squad. So you see people adjusting based on who the killers are. That's the funny thing we noticed when we we're playing. You could see people changing attributes. You'd see the victim change and then you see the killer change. And there's almost this game going back and forth. <laughs> right. Right. Which is uh, to me, it's good. Like that. Uh, that's just all good. Yeah, it's fun. It makes it interesting. Okay, so uh, let's get into Nancy. So we'll go to Nancy. We're going to go to Danny. We're going to break down just real quick their abilities, uh, first impressions playing with them, that kind of stuff. Okay. All right, so let's start with Black Nancy. Now, I've, I've, I've played with her probably five, six times, I think, at this point. And I, I got to say, I, I really enjoy this character. Yeah, I think the ability is really cool. Both ability, the her seeing ability and the the barbed wire traps are neat. They're cool, uh, dude. The barbed wire traps are my favorite. Well, and do you have you noticed they stick to their feet too? Yeah. Why do, does it do that every time? I, so well, we'll go over the perks of the her ability, but uh, like I think it does. I I, th- I don't know. That might be an ability. I don't know if that just happens or what. But they they talk a little bit about it. I'm not exactly sure exactly how the Exactly, I wonder. Exactly. I, w- I wonder if it's when they because when they're trying to disable the trap, but if you hit them while they're doing it, they're not able to fully disable it. Like if they run into it, what I'm saying, and then it sticks to their feet. I'll bet that's huh. what it is. Maybe that. Maybe that is. But they're really fun to use because and you can put them in doorways and gaps. Now the downside of the traps. Just be aware of this: that the traps, your teammates will walk through them constantly. Yeah, yeah, well, so the funniest thing is when we were playing, I noticed <laughs> I was watching our gameplay as I was editing it, and I hear you keep saying, like, man, can we walk through the traps or something? My traps keep getting unset, and we didn't know at the time. It's because we're running through them, I and I ran through yours one time, and I'm like, yeah, that sucks. <laughs> yeah, that's annoying, but it's, I think it's fair. It's it's not a big deal. You just can't use your traps in, like, well-traveled areas, which is, you are be on the same page with your team, like, hey, we're trapping off side garden yeah no so and so if you're going to use her traps i'd recommend putting them in slip spots yeah well i had a hitchhiker who kept using every slip spot with my trap i swear he was trolling me he might have been but he he would go through every slip spot and disable all my traps yeah that's brutal that is that's brutal so you just you just have to be aware when using but the traps are effective and they catch people a lot because people don't look for them right now yeah so let's start with her basic attributes. So she comes with, what is it? 20 savagery, 33 blood harvesting, which is a lot. So she's big on blood harvesting and only 15 endurance. And trust me when I say this, you will notice that. Yeah. So to me, this is like, she's a cook variant. She's similar to cook. She's like a cook hitchhiker blend just in hitchhiker only in that she has traps. Right, right. Oh, by the way, we didn't even say. So you have to pay to use the skin. It's ten dollars, and we'll get into that later. But that is what it is. Yeah. But no, yeah. So yeah. So you're gonna have to choose what you want to level up with her. Probably get her endurance up and savagery a little bit. I'm not so concerned with blood harvesting, although it is important. Yeah. Um. I would say running scout on her is probably a must. Yeah, because there was times where we when we were cooking Nancy where we just could not get people and i did i made a mistake with cook where i did not have his endurance up and i was just i couldn't even i'd swing a couple times then i'd be gassed out yeah and when we're both running these characters it got it can be it's like you're just chasing people and getting a hit here and there yeah yeah so it's just something again it's all part of that blend of who you're choosing as family members but her as a a new addition you know it's good it works she's an older lady she's not gonna be that fast 
Oh, Correct. It's not able to hurt people that much, but you can change that with uh, the abilities you choose. Or right. Perks. Yep. So, uh, and we'll get more into like Nancy builds and stuff later. This is just more of understanding the character. So her ability spy. Now, at first I was kind of like, eh, it's kind of lame. Not really into it until I started using it and feeling how powerful it can be. Bro, especially at near the end of the game where there's maybe one, two people left and you don't know where they are. Just getting a little piece of information and you can even at the base level of Nancy, you can see enough to know the general area of where they're at. Right. And so what it does is she can see through a victim's eyes and it's really blurry. Right. So, and I think you can fix that in the abilities, like you can level it up so it's not as blurry, but for sure it comes in handy exactly what you said. I, I use it all throughout the game. Like a lot of times when we're in family, I would use it and uh, I would see someone sitting outside in a bush, like outside a side garden. And then I'd go out there and find them in the bush. Like it was just, it's a fun, it's a fun perk to use. Well, and I'll tell you, I saw someone who leveled it all the way up. I saw him say it. I didn't. I didn't actually see the gameplay, but they said when you level, you get to level three on this perk that it's like, it's like OP because you, it's very clear. You can see exactly where they are. <laughs> yeah. Which is funny because cook's abilities like that too, right? It's the same thing. Yeah. It's a different way of seeing exactly where they are. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like, I feel like with Nancy's perk, people aren't as nervous about it. So you can catch people that will kind of sit around in the same spot thinking that, Oh, she didn't, she won't be able to tell. Well, the difference though, with Nancy, you can't hide from the ability that I know of, right? Cook, you can just stop moving and he can't track you. Nancy, you're screwed. The only thing I wonder if they, so Julie has an ability, her ability usually blocks, I think cook and like Johnny tracking her. I wonder if that'll play into Nancy too. I haven't seen anything, but I'm sure they'll make changes and adjust as needed. But overall, I mean, do we want to go through the top? Can we see yeah, what those top three we're are? We're just going to go over the top of her tree. So the top one uh, on the left here, level three. So always spy on the victim uh, closest to you. Okay. So that, so that makes it interesting. So we have the always spy. So you see whoever's closest to you, which which is valuable because then you can probably kill him. You could obviously kill him quicker. Well, yeah. And if you're doing that tactic, like we talked about where you're sitting on the balcony is cooked. Sorry. I keep playing with that thing. Uh, if you're sitting on the balcony is cooked and you just want to see if someone's in the house, you just use the spy. Or I guess, sorry, that wouldn't be cooked. That'd be Nancy variant. <laughs> if you're a Nancy, let's say you play, do that tactic. You sit on the top and you just use this ability. You'll see if someone's in the house. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I mean, I don't know why you'd sit with Nancy on the top. But I guess anyone. Yeah, it's just a thought. It's just a thought. This one, though, if you're out of these two, this so, one well, here, the next one is spy on the victim. So there's the you can spy on the victim closest or the one furthest from you. I would choose furthest because in the scenario where you're not around, as long as you can communicate with your team, that's important because if someone's like again, in my head, I think of like family house. Sometimes people will get out and I don't even know. They have an antsy and it's like, oh shoot, they're already at the car battery. We got to get out of here. Yeah, that's all great, except I don't think anyone's going to use those two. I think they're going to use this one, which is <laughs> clear vision. So it just makes it a lot easier to see what's going on. That And that's the one that is like OP. Like, that's the one I would use, too. I, I don't care about the close or far away. I want to see exactly what's going on. Right. So that's what I think the, the big one. And then I think the other abilities are just, what's the other ones? Reduces recharge rate. Uh, increases the rate ability recharges by 40% and then increases the amount of time your spy ability is active by 55%. So that's just buffing it and you can choose your way, but I think clear vision at the top level three rank is the way to go. That's what I'm going for. So overall, yeah. uh, overall I'm, I'm, I'm into it. It's, I, I think Nancy's good. I think she's a fun character to play. The traps are great. It's just dialing as in as with every character, it's just dialing in her ability and attributes and skill points and stuff to make her better. You, like I said, you're going to need more endurance. That's a must and probably more savagery. Yeah. Cause I, I have a real hard time where I'm just, it's, I'm just like hitting them with like nerfed bullets. It's not bullets, but you know, it's just like you're hitting them nonstop. Like a couple of games, I got like 10 hits on someone. Yeah. You have to get that savagery up a little bit. Yeah, so finding that blend, but yeah, overall, I'll rate her a. Uh, I'm gonna give her an eight point seven. 
I'm gonna go 9.3. I think she's a Ooh. lot of fun to play with. She's not the, again, she's not the most savagery. She's not gonna get a ton of kills, but she gets a ton of information. Like her and Cook are just great, great killers to have, just to get more information on what's going on with the victims. Yeah, and they both like the traps and the locks are awesome on both. And especially being a newer player, relatively newer, I think I'm level 20 something now. These are important because when you don't know what's going on and you start start to panic, having someone like Nancy on your team is just going to give you the information you need to settle you down and go hunt the victims. Yeah, yeah. I just like it. I like the they just did a lot to add to how you can play this game. Yeah. Like, and I think that's awesome. That's going to help this game grow. It's going to help people stick around longer, that kind of stuff. So I'm a huge fan. Good job. Good. Now <laughs> on to Danny. Can Danny live up to the hype? And we'll say that straight up. I've played Danny three times probably now. You probably have you played him? I haven't played him at all. Okay, so we'll go off the stats, but I can tell you straight up, Danny is super powerful and is almost in my mind, he's a must have on your team if you if someone if someone's bought him. Well, like I said, he's my prime target to tunnel. If I see Danny or Connie, there I'm going at him. And arguably, he has the best victim ability. Yeah, he can really just ruin your life as a killer or a family <laughs> member. He really can. So uh, let's get his attributes. He is 30 in toughness, 25 endurance. His strength is a level 15, proficiency 35, and stealth 25. So he's high in proficiency and toughness and low in strength and kind of lower in stealth. Yeah, which so I is what I did. I buff I I put all my points into him and I got my proficiency and I think I even turned the toughness up as much as I could. Just because I wanted to highlight the good strong points of him. And dude, this dude just cracks locks like crazy. He's yeah, really good. Well, I think honestly, I wonder if stealth would be better to put points in. I don't even I'm not so what is stealth doing? So here's the thing. I get com confused with proficiency and stealth. And this is how I think, again, I'm not a victim meme, but we'll, we'll work on it. We're going to get better. Uh, stealth, I know it works for like on the hook or when you start and you're hanging, like using your, like that's a stealth meter. Is it like quieter? It's yes. quieter. That's what it is. So when you're opening toolboxes, you're getting off the hook, you're picking up bone shards. It's going to be, you can All do it is, faster because right, it's quieter. Right. Because if you have that leveled up, you literally can just mash the button and not make noise okay so then proficiency is when you're trying to unlock things it's faster i think you yes yes and i think actually with stealth even if you have that up really high i think you can open doors without making the noise oh because i've noticed that before and i didn't understand what was going on i just thought it was like bugged i think it's just because i have my stealth high oh that makes sense okay yeah so with him especially because you do a lot of inspecting and different things I, I would imagine having high stealth would be good too yeah okay so dude yeah so just baseline stats alone this dude's a beast he's like a connie a better to me almost a better version of con yeah he's he's the player yeah so let's get into his attributes or his little skill so his his ability is uh study and tamper and this one had a lot of people confused including myself i had to watch videos on it to figure out what exactly what exactly you're doing because you'll see you have this meter it's unlike the other victims you have this meter but it doesn't like generate you know power or anything like the other ones the little power bar or whatever will go up this one in order to to gain that ability you have to study things yeah so Let's first talk about what that ability even is. So what his ability can do is basically it can lock out a major objective, such as the valve. If you use his ability, the study and tamper on it, you can lock it out to the point. It'll, the, as, a, as a family member, you cannot turn it off. Yeah, so if he uses his ability and uh, what do they call it? It's not a tampers. If he tampers like the pressure valve, once that turn is turned on, family members cannot shut it off. Yeah, and he can do that to that. He can do it to the fuse box. Uh, is that it? I'm sure there's other things that we're not thinking about. But but the, so one thing to notice though, or to note, can he tamper a door? I'm not sure. I, I think oh. I think he can tamper other things, like maybe even lights. He can tamper just so you turn it on. They can't turn it off. I, I'm not sure. Interesting. But yeah, so you study to get your ability up. You study items like. The radio, I think you'd say like toolboxes, like all these mechanical items you can you can study that to get your ability up. But then when you're tampering something like the uh, well, we'll say the fuse box, you have to inspect it first to get that just to even be able to tamper. You have to gain that knowledge 
and then you can tamper it. And it, so, but I don't think you have to, you don't have to have the, your tamper uh, meter up, but it'll go slower if you don't. Yeah. So the way the tamper meter works is basically all that inspecting stuff you do, all that's going to do is make it easy for you to tamper the large objectives. Right. And, and the good thing is once you tamper it, you don't necessarily have to be the one to do it. Like, so for example, I could tamper the fuse box, but you're the one who actually goes, puts the fuse in and does the work. You it's that ability still will apply. So once you hit the fuse, they can't shut it off. Yeah. And the tamper works like a lock pick. It's the same mechanic, just really slow. So as you could imagine, and we ran into it one time, I think I forget where we were playing, uh, where they tampered an objective and then they're just getting out. Like you can't do anything. Yeah. They did it. I think to the steam valve. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or pressure valve, whatever. And then it's you're screwed because there's no way you can shut it. So that's open for the rest of the game. So it, so it is harder to do, but once you get Danny down and, and you're able to use this, I mean, shoot, he's a must have. Absolutely a must have. And another thing with his, I think certain things you um, inspect give you more points. I heard someone say, like, if you inspect an exit gate, you get more knowledge than a lamp or something yeah that's true some give you like a very like hardly any it takes a lot yeah but when you build it up like i said then when you hit those major objectives you can unlock them quick so let's take a look at that that tamper skill tree yeah let's hit the let's go to the level three that's where the good stuff's at so you can instantly study objects with a tap of a button Ooh. so i guess that just takes down your inspecting time I, yeah i think so that's just like instant that seems crazy well, it also says tampered exits stay open or shut down longer so because i think what you can do i believe you don't have to tamper it fully you could do like because you have like three three notches you can tamper um if you only if you didn't finish the tamper and opened it i think it just means it's going to stay open longer like they said opposed to if you fully tamper then it just stays open the rest of the match really i believe that's the way that works huh Okay, so the, another level three. Objects that can be studied or tampered with are permanently highlighted when approached. The range is also increased. So that'll just show you all the objects you can tamper, I guess. Okay. I don't, Which right. that's, I don't, I don't see that as like a must have perk. No. Uh, the last one, while tampering with objects, both you and the objects are highlighted to all victims. Okay, so that'll that'll help. I would I would imagine everyone's gonna run this uh, instant study. Yeah, the other one, the one you just mentioned, is good. It's good to let the team know. But if you're talking to your team, you don't need that at all. No, no. It's yeah. If you're playing like with randoms, it'd be nice. But you're right though. The instant study is what I'm gonna run, and I imagine that's what everyone's gonna run. Yeah. So uh, overall, Danny. Da oh, dude, I'd say Danny's a nine point five. Yeah, he's a good. He, I mean, I, it's hard for me to rate him because honestly, I haven't played him. I so. have, and like I said, I'm not good. Did I survive with him? No, but but I got further than I probably would have gone. I didn't even use his tamper ability. It's really about what his ability can do for your team, and this dude could just win you the match. Yeah, yeah, I think he's a must. Like he's in the lineup now. Well, and when you talk about the pressure, especially with that pressure tank, and think about slaughterhouse when he got moved from downstairs to upstairs. Now it's hard to get that thing off. Well, now if you tamper with Danny and someone puts that with a wheel on and they open it up, you're out. It's yeah. open for the rest of the match. <laughs> fin finito. Yeah, he's powerful. All right. So overall, uh, they did a great job with these characters. I think they're really cool. And uh, I'm looking forward to see what's next with them. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about the Johnny nerf. A lot of people I've seen are very, very upset by this. Yeah, especially the Johnny mains out there, which I get, man. If that's your character, then they nerf him. Mm, not great. So what uh, What I've seen, like I said, I don't play with Johnny. It seems his... Uh... So what I heard, what I've heard is like, I guess he had a lunge. I didn't play Johnny that much, but I guess he had a lunge kind of when you would go to attack the victim and it made it really powerful to get the kill. And I don't know if they nerfed his savagery. I don't think they did anything else, but just the mechanic of how you play with him, I believe is what they nerfed. Yeah, I've I've seen people use Johnny before and he can do they can almost like string together these lunge swings to where they're just like flying after the victim. Right, right. And so yeah, it kind of sucks that he got nerfed. Um, but honestly, to me, it's like if if I this if for example, if they I play Cook, if they nerf Cook, I'll just go to a different victim and get good with them. I don't 
I would kind of want them to change victims or sorry, killers as time goes on. Ooh, controversial take. I mean, I don't want it to be the same. I don't want Johnny. Well, I, th I think another issue with it is his foot. Uh, from what I saw, the footsteps were like not working well. Like they disappeared really fast and people are having trouble even tracking now. And I think some of this might have been bugs. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because I think in the patch notes, I did see something where they talked about Johnny, but we'll we'll have to look into that a little more. Well, we might as well just read a little Reddit post here of a Johnny main, it looks like. <laughs> well, especially since we don't play Johnny, it's easy for me to say I don't really care that much because I don't. I don't play with him. <laughs> yeah, so let's see what they said. So they didn't nerf Johnny's lunge. They removed it. I can't hit a victim until I'm literally inhaling their hairs. <laughs> <laughs> And what is even more frustrating is that he's that standing still hit at the same time. That he does that standing still hit at the same time. I don't know. Somehow what that means. he feels heavier than Bubba. So it sounds like he's slower. Yeah. I mean, he always had like kind of like a heavy presence to him. But yeah, so this is, I think, all really tied to that lunge. Yeah. And here's the thing, though. You know, I imagine they're probably going to change things again with him. If everyone's unhappy with it, they'll probably make a change and update him. And like I said, I think the this is the biggest issue. Like I said, there was some tracking stuff I heard people complaining about, but I think it's the it's the lunge is what really pe people are upset about. So obviously, if it, if they went too far, they'll they'll correct it. Yeah, and I do understand that. That would be frustrating with the mechanic of how he plays has changed, opposed to just changing like some stats. If you can't even play in the same way, you have to almost relearn how to play with Johnny. That would be frustrating. Well, yeah, if that's your guy and you're comfortable playing with him and now you just lost your way to attack a victim, like, come on. I'll tell you what, I don't think I even saw a Johnny. I don't think I ran with a Johnny the whole time we played. No. Yeah. Maybe they knew already. Yeah, I mean, it's a bummer, but is it the end of the world? No. All right, after talking about all the update, what do you think could have been done better? Well, we talked about when you introduce a new map, A, they should have let you let that be like the they should have given it more weight to where you can get it more often because it was frustrating not getting nancy's house for the majority of the time we played yeah i wish they just had a mode honestly it could be as simple as that. if you had a mode where you could just explore the maps not like uh in the game where you can just look around and like kind of just a free play that would be awesome yeah yeah like that alone i wouldn't even complain about not even playing on the map as long as i can explore it and like see where things are at Right. Okay. Yeah, I, I think it would be nice if they put it in a little heavier of a rotation. Uh, now, this part doesn't surprise me, but there was a lot of lobby dodging. Oh, a ton. So, it, which is to be expected because you have two new characters. Everyone wants to play with Danny and Nancy. And what obviously happens, you load into a lobby. If you're Nancy, people are going to drop in, leave, drop in, leave. And in the beginning, it happened a lot. Yeah, and I'll say this, though. I don't think we got any lobbies disbanded. True. So some, I don't know if they corrected something, but and maybe that's because Leatherface isn't mandatory anymore, but we got every game we loaded into, we got into. Yeah, so even though there was lobby dungeon, which I'm not even sure how they could fix that at this point. <laughs> like, that seems like a big project to try to fix the people dodging well, other than a penalty. Yeah, I would say the penalty is the way you do that. Yeah, uh, but it kind of, I, I think it just kind of worked itself out. At least the last time I played, I think yesterday, it was, it, people weren't doing it really. Yeah, I'm happy we just were able to get in game, so. Yeah. The other thing is, there's a bug. Oh, yes. <laughs> so, for some reason, so they introduced, this is with update two, that, is it six people? If six people ready up, it'll drop the timer to like 30 seconds? I believe so. So what now here's what they messed up and hopefully they'll get this. But if one of the victims readies and then like it drops the time. So if everyone's readied up, I think it drops it, you know, five seconds or whatever. I think this is how they do it. It's something like this. Then they unready. It'll take it back to a minute or something as if they had left the lobby. It's almost like, you know, how a new player comes in. Yeah. And then if they're ready again, then it'll drop it back to 30 seconds. Yeah, so Dan ran into an issue where someone was doing that, flipping it from ready to unready, and it was going from what, like 5, 20 seconds to a minute? 
back and forth. <laughs> yeah, and they just reset that 30 second clock. Yeah, they need to probably fix that. Yeah, luckily the guy only did it a couple times. It wasn't that it, we didn't lose a lobby, but you could endlessly troll. Yeah, there should be some mechanics. As soon as everyone's ready and it drops to five or twenty seconds, whichever one it goes to, just have it set there. And it doesn't you can't reset it again. It just the match is gonna start. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, because I think they have it's almost like they have it coded that it's as if someone left the lobby, which yeah. just isn't the case. So uh then other than that what else server that we did have some server issues in the beginning that was like we just couldn't join lobbies and that was wow. probably 20 minutes dude like every game that updates has these type of bugs yes it, in a perfect world it would have been nice if the update rolled out and everything was smooth but that's just not the reality yeah so uh overall my biggest frustrations were simply uh getting on nancy's ma house map that was pretty much the thing i was annoyed about yeah other than the first couple hours of the update that was kind of rough but after that dude the update was smooth yeah it played well and i like like i said we like the dlc characters we like the map i just would have liked to play it more that's all yeah all right so now let's get into a little bit of mud <laughs> Danny and Nancy, are they pay to win? So to, uh, I think first to be important to understand what does pay to win mean? Okay. Okay. So pay to win games in which you get an advantage in the game. If you spend real money on items, weapons, or features and are thus clearly superior to other players, clearly superior, important. Okay. okay. Most of the time, such games are free to play, making it easy to get started in the game. Okay. That doesn't matter. So okay. you, get, uh, you pay for something and you get a clear advantage right. for that thing. Do you think Danny and Nancy fall into this category? Because I've seen a lot. A lot of people say, hey, this is pay to win. We don't like it. Blah, 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 blah. What do you um, think? I, I don't. I don't think they're pay to win. Because I think, for one, Nancy isn't, first of all, overpowered. Now, if, like, if you put Leatherface in the game as a dlc content i would say that would be more pay to win oh yeah uh um, that like because, legit changes the whole game yeah but nancy's like a hybrid of characters in that you don't have to have her no no like it doesn't as a as if the killers have nancy or don't it it's just it'll affect the play style a little but not necessarily you're you can still you still have the same opportunity to get out yeah they're not she's not overwhelmingly overpowered right she just has a cool power in my opinion now, Danny would be more on the pay to win side if you if they were going that way, because his power, his ability is super powerful. Yeah, it is. And but is it it's weird to say pay to win because you still have the same escapes and everything. He just more can hook up the whole team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't I don't believe. OK, so my opinion, I don't believe either of these things are pay to win. I don't think they're so overpowered where if you have one of them, you're gonna win because dan danny's ability is is important it's very good but it's kind of hard to do too like you have to do a lot of work to be able to tamper things yeah and here's the thing like i know this game costs money and then the dlc costs money but like they they have to put work it's a smaller studio they have to make these things and like we've talked about before i i have no problem supporting them the way they have the transparency the bug fixes, they're very like open to the fan base. So I don't even care if you have to, it's, I mean, obviously if it's like super pay to win, yeah, I might have a problem, but like, I don't think this game will even have anything like that in it because that's not even how this game's made. It's not like you have one killer that can just be like super overpowered. Yeah, it, it, that would be a problem, right? And we're not in that scenario. Plus, like I was, I've told you, it's like, if you're paying for a character, they better be good. So yeah, there's a balance, and they thought they balanced it well. These characters are very good, but they're not OP by any means. I mean, they might, yeah. And again, you're a victim. So on the Danny side, it's weird to say OP because, like, if you get caught by Leatherface, you still have the same chance of dying. Like, it's not, it doesn't really <laughs> matter. It's just like you can do a little something extra. Yeah, it's just funny to me when people complain about it being pay to win. I'm like, dude, the character again. The characters better be good if I'm paying ten dollars. They better be decent. Yeah, unfortunately, it's just the way gaming, and I totally get it. I hear it in the comments. A lot of people say it. You know, with the, the everyone is sick of the microtransactions and the in-game skins and how a lot of these companies do it. Uh, I don't think this is the case with Gun Studio. Like, 
it's a smaller game, a smaller studio, and they're doing what they can to build the game up and help support the fan base. But it does come down to you do have to like they need money to help support them <laughs> for everything they're putting in. Well, that's why again when I listened to them talk in one of their interviews. They said, like, yeah, as long as people are paying for things, they'll keep and people are playing, they're going to keep developing the game. And it's like, I want to support them because I really like the game. I thought they've done a good job. And like you said, the transparency, it's like second to none. I've never seen another studio be as transparent as they are. Right. Yeah. Right. So I see you here. You have in game unlock. Yeah. So this is another thing. Like the studio themselves have talked about this that they want to make it so like some of these characters, there's a way to unlock them in game. So you don't have to pay that, which cool. I think, which I think that would probably be the best way to do this because it, I don't like that. You have to pay to get a character. I have no problem personally doing it, but I understand some people want it. Right. Uh, and I think having an ability to like, whatever may be to unlock them, whether it's a battle pass or whatever they want to do, would be cool to, to have dude i would love a tcm battle pass where you you can unlock these characters at the end of it and you have something to grind for i mean i'm grinding anyways just to get all the abilities up that that is a big incentive to get all the perks leveled up and all that stuff in your character but it'd be cool if you got like you know different things through this battle pass option yeah see but the thing you gotta think about too is in a battle pass that's a lot of time and effort in developing the things to unlock whether it's you know outfits uh, different customizable things that's a huge project huge project but also a huge money maker oh yeah so yeah i mean i don't know, <laughs> I don't know. uh anything else you want to get into no uh, the update was a lot of fun dude i'm having a fun time playing this game we'll probably be playing soon once you get better oh yeah well you know when you're sick i can still get some gaming and <laughs> you know what i mean uh i'm looking forward the one thing I want to say, I'm, the thing I'm looking forward to is leveling up Nancy's traps. So I have a couple, uh, and we'll talk perks on the next podcast, but I have some that are like really effective for traps where you can get additional traps. Like you use one, but it doesn't take it out of your inventory and makes more damage and stuff like that. Almost like a serrated effect, I think, on one of them even. And uh, I can't wait to get those up because I, like seriously, some matches when I use those, I'll get... I don't even know eight people that run into them or more dude. It's going to play so differently when you level her up, just like my cook. I'm still, I'm almost to that ability where I can mark the players and everyone can see dude. That's it's so hard to level. It's up. so hard. All right. Well on that note, uh, we're out of here. See you. Bye. That's, that's the way to end. <laughs>